Well, hey there, and welcome to today's short video presentation. I am Arthur Mars. I've spent the last 38 years photographing birds, and I can help you learn to make better bird photographs. We can teach you about beautiful light and image design. We can teach you when to work super tight and when to work wide. Lots of folks think that this image was created in Photoshop, but it is an accurate representation of the RAW file. We can teach you how to put the elements of composition together to make a pleasing photograph. And when everything goes perfectly, we can put you in position to make contest winning images. Be sure to visit my educational blog and birdphotographers.net. You can see the links below. I hope somebody out there can join me at Fort DeSoto in the next month. And be sure to use Bedford. Use the Burgess Art Code at checkout for a 3% discount on your major gear and free second day air shipping. So now we're going to head over to Photo Mechanic and then to Photoshop and get to work on today's raw conversion. This image was created on a spring DeSoto IPT on April 12, 2021. And you can head over to the blog to see the final optimized version. From Photo Mechanic, I go Control, Edit Photo with Adobe Photoshop. Since I'm already there, we can save time by just heading over to Photoshop. And now we're getting to the meat and potatoes of this image. I brought this image into Photo Mechanic and saw that the RAW file needed a bit more light. So I'm going to increase the exposure by about a third of a stop. Next, we're going to click on White Balance. So we see that the As Shot White Balance on the temperature slider was 55.50. Just by eyeballing it, I can tell that the brightest whites are here on the flanks. So by hitting I, I bring up the eyedropper tool. I click here. Again, notice 5550. When we go to eyedropper, it's suggesting 4950. So we see it's made it a lot more blue. And in general, I'll settle on a value somewhere between the as shot value of 5550 and the custom white balance of 4950. I like the blue in the back, so I will raise this a little bit and 5200 looks just fine. Next, we set the white point. We hold down the option key and move the white slider to the right. You see some speckles in the lower left. Those are specular highlights that I'm not worried about, but I do want to get rid of the ones on the bird's breast. So I come to plus 12 and what I do, if it's telling me plus 12, I'll cut this in half to plus six. So people say, why don't you set your whites to the point where the overexposure warning disappears? Because that would put them at 254, 254, 254, and make it really difficult to restore detail. With the black point, I hold down the option key, move it to the left. Here come the speckles, the underexposed speckles. And once they disappear, I leave it right there. We're almost done. I set the clarity at 10, 11, or 12. That is a form of out of camera sharpening. And I'll generally increase the vibrance to about 12, 15. See how it looks. You can always go your before and after by clicking here. I like it much brighter. And the last thing I'll do with most images is pull the highlight slider down to resource them. And the last thing I'll do with most images is pull the highlight slider down to taste to restore some detail in the brightest whites. And I may open up the shadows. So you'll see that I rarely touch the contrast slider. So this looks fine to me. I'm going to hit open to open the TIFF file in Photoshop. When I start the image optimization, a little crop from here, the patch tool to get rid of some of these lumps and distracting elements. And you can see the final product in today's blog post. There'll be a link in the information below this video. So thanks for visiting. Have a great day. And oh, one last thing I should have mentioned. If you're converting in Lightroom or DPP or Capture One, the steps are pretty much the same. Anyway, get out, make some great pictures, and we'll see you when we see you.